Hey guys, a couple of weeks ago, you probably remember I made a video talking about the Raspberry Pi. Well, around the time that I heard my Raspberry Pi was going to be shipping, a lot of people were saying, why did you order the Raspberry Pi? Why didn't you get the MK802? It's so much better. Well, I definitely took that to heart. I did a little looking around, a little shopping, a little thinking, and I ended up purchasing one. Needless to say, it showed up about a week and a half later, something like 12 to 15 days. And as you can see, it is right here with me. As far as the specs on this device, it has the all-winner A10 CPU. That claims to be a multi-core CPU. It's a 1 GHz processor with a 500 MHz dedicated GPU, and I think it's the Mali 400 GPU. The box itself actually has a bunch of specifications on it, but it says it's a Cortex-A8 1.5 GHz, being a CPU that's 1 GHz and a 500 MHz uh, GPU. You have the option of 512 megs or 1 gig of RAM. I picked up the one with 1 gig because it was the same price. I guess it all depends on the vendor you go through. I did provide a link on Google Plus to the one that I purchased, which is, I think, $62 now, and I paid more than that for it, just a little more. So yeah, a decent processor, faster than the Raspberry Pi. Comes with 1 gig of RAM, which is about four times with that of the Raspberry Pi. Comes with four gigs of built-in storage, which is infinitely more than the Raspberry Pi comes with. And it comes with its own little plastic case, which is wonderful in and of itself. In terms of just size, so you can sort of get a, a point of reference here, this is the Raspberry Pi, which is going to be horribly out of focus, and this is the, uh, doesn't really have a name, I guess it's MK802 is the only name they've got for it. They have Android 4.0 mini PC written on it, but I think Google may, made them change it after, may, maybe after this manufacturing run. It's now supposed to be the mini Android 4.0 PC, something like that. But still, uh, it's about, there we go, uh, two-thirds the size of the Raspberry Pi, and probably quite a bit thinner. Uh, the one thing I also forget to mention, it does have a micro SD card slot. It has a, an HDMI, mini HDMI port, a USB OTG port, and it comes with a funky little adapter to make it a full-size port, which is awesome, a full-size USB port, and then a little AC power adapter, which actually came with an AC power adapter, although they sent me the European one with a little adapter. So. You do what you have to do. Now for those of you probably wondering why I purchased this instead of a second Raspberry Pi, it's just for this reason. So I would have something more to make content about, something more to experiment with. I can try a bunch of different Linux distros on this, or I can actually use it as an Android PC if I'm so inclined. And of course, what's next? Let's go ahead, hook this thing up, and turn it on. All right, as you can probably see now, I have it all hooked up. It is a little bit awkward to get hooked up. You know, you've got all these wires all around it. But I have a mouse here, a keyboard over here through the USB OTG port, and then a HDMI, excuse me, an HDMI to, or mini HDMI to regular HDMI. This is the power AC adapter, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in, and then we should hopefully see something happen. As you can see, red light came on. There we go. It honestly took quite a little while, but we do actually have the Android logo showing up now. And actually, just a couple of seconds after that, we can see the desktop. Uh, I'm going to try to be capturing this using an HDMI capture card, so you probably won't see anything from the camera anymore. But as you can see here, I do have a mouse moving on the screen. If I use the mouse wheel, it will go between the different desktops. I've got different apps here, Android apps. In case I forgot to mention, and I don't think I forgot, this is running Android version 4.0. Let's just go ahead and see if I can get into the settings and check that. So settings. And it is still kind of starting up, so it's a little bit slow. We'll go down to about PC. There we go, 4.0.3. So it is a little newer than I expected. In terms of everything else about it, uh, I'm not going to go into a full review. This is just sort of my initial impressions of the device. But I mean, as you can see here, it is running, it's usable. Uh, if I open something like Netflix, it will play back, and it plays back actually in pretty decent quality. Uh, I'm not really going to play anything on here for you just because that would violate copyright, and I really don't want to do that. But uh, you see it's connected to my Wi-Fi down here in the bottom right corner. Uh, it's pulling up pretty common things from my stream. I've got a three-year-old, so there's a lot of three-year-old type stuff. But uh, if I just click on this real quick, hopefully... Uh, we won't get flagged or anything, but that's assuming it actually decides to work. There we go. Now, so far, my limited experience with it, I will say it works. It gets the job done, but it's a bit slow. Uh, as you've probably noticed from a couple of the things here, one gigahertz processor and one giga RAM, uh, it's definitely not a powerhouse. But as you can see there, video is playing, mouse is still usable, and it works. 
Uh, that's about as far as I'm going to go, but you can see it is playing back smoothly. So we'll go ahead and exit. As far as other stuff, the, the keyboard and mouse are very usable in the majority of applications, at least not, uh, you know, traditional desktop type apps like the browser. You can see here I've got the mouse. I can go ahead and click on stuff and I can type. If I wanted to go to twill.tv, I can do that. Hit the enter key and it goes for me. There in just a second. Yeah, there we go. We're on my website and it's at a 720p resolution, so it's not going to be uh, amazing or anything. And it's, like I said, a little bit slow, but it is very usable. I mean, if you wanted this as just a backup machine or something for watching media, or in my case for watching Netflix, it's very, very handy. But really, I just sort of wanted to scratch the surface. Uh, the one thing I have found with this, the one thing that's kind of awkward, is gaming. And I kind of figured maybe there would be some sort of a backdoor or something built into it that would translate in the, the keystrokes from one thing to another. But things like Minecraft, you see I've got here, doesn't really work. I can use the mouse to do some very limited stuff, but mouse alone, one mouse, doesn't really, doesn't really get the job done. Uh, trying to use the keyboard doesn't do a thing, so not really that usable. I, I'll go ahead and load it up just because, you know, Minecraft, we're allowed to do that. Let's see, start the game. It loads up decently fast, and I mean, it is usable. If I hold the left mouse button down, I can do that, and then if I actually click the up button, I can move. But, like you see there, I have to use the arrow, key, arrow keys on here. Arrow keys on the keyboard don't do a thing. No keys on the keyboard do a thing. So, I mean, it is playable, it is usable. Not the best thing in the world, but it's there. So one way or another, for something about $65, not a bad investment in my opinion, especially when you consider Raspberry Pi is, what, $40 shipped plus uh, the price of a case if you want one, which is about $18 to $20, plus the price of an SDHC card, which can be anywhere from $5 to $20 depending on what you want. You're running about the same price, if not a little more. Now one thing I know I forgot to mention with regards to this device is, like I said, it has a micro SD slot. On that micro SD slot, the card that you put in it, you can actually put Linux distros as well. So in my opinion, this is kind of on equal even footing with the Raspberry Pi in terms of everyday usability. In terms of a development device, this definitely is not. Uh, I would not, you know, be able to, to I guess you, you could technically do the same kind of stuff you can do with the Raspberry Pi, but it's just not really geared toward that market. Like I said, it comes with Android by default. It comes with actually all of the Google services on it by default. I think they've somehow worked with Google to get that set up. I don't really know about any of that. But uh, it has been very usable, very... Uh, I don't want to say it's fast, because it's really not, but usable for 65 bucks to have something that I can hook up to my TV and use as a media center. That's pretty awesome to have something that I can do some very limited gaming. I mean, it will play Angry Birds. That, again, is pretty awesome. Above and beyond that, it's hard to ask for much more. Uh, it would be nice if I had some way to do touch interaction with it, uh, multi-touch, but I I don't know. I guess maybe I'd have to see if, if something like the Apple Magic Trackpad would work with it. It does have built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so I think it has Bluetooth. Uh, so that may be an option. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick look and uh, first impressions of this device. I'm going to be doing a lot more testing with it over the next few weeks, just like I have been with the Raspberry Pi, and uh, I'll let you know more as I know more. That's all for me for today, though. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you probably tomorrow.